in the latest edition of Adobe Illustrator, that would be Adobe Illustrator CC Creative Cloud for 2021. In the preferences, Adobe has added a couple of extra little features. So I wanted to point those out. So this, this tutorial is really if you have upgraded to the very latest in Adobe Illustrator. So I've kind of set up my workspace with the panels that I want to use. And I'm going to go to Illustrator Preferences and General. And right here, the keyboard increment, this is the default 0 0.0139. That's the distance an object will move if you have selected it and hit your arrow keys on your keyboard to what I call nudge an object into place when you want to move it just very small increments. That's a really low number. These are also uh, defaults. I don't really change those at all. Down here, um, I don't use precise cursors. You can enable that feature just by holding your caps lock key on your keyboard to do that. If you're unsure of what an object does in Illustrator, you can hover over show tool tips and a yellow bar will pop up. I think it's yellow or light blue. That'll give you a little tip on what that tool does or what that feature does. Um, I show or hide my rulers automatically just by hitting Command R. So I'll leave that option off. I've always con controlled it just by using the command. Command or Control R on a PC. Anti-aliased artwork. Anti-alias is semi-transparent edge pixels for smoother transitions of value. So you definitely want that turned on. I'll be honest, I've never used this feature. Select same tint percentage. I think if you are doing a lot of lowering the opacity values on colors, this would allow you to select multiple colors based on that opacity or tint option. I am not a really big user of that. So I just leave that turned off. If you're unsure what to do for the next file, you can always show the home screen when no documents are open. That'll show you a large dark screen with a list of the last few files that you've actually worked on in Illustrator. It's kind of a great shortcut to get back to previous uh, files you've worked on. If you're used to working in the old windows as they would pop up in Illustrator, you can use what's called the legacy new file interface. Legacy just refers to an older version of Illustrator. And I'm going to disable that because I want to use the latest and greatest update features. Uh, preview bounds. Anytime I see the word bounds or boundary, I want to disable that. If I wanted a boundary, I would turn on the free transform tool. I don't need preview bounds for that. These are defaults, so I keep them turned on. Up here on the right, double click to isolate, absolutely turn that off. That is an advanced feature. I would cover that later, but if you're new to Illustrator, it's just going to confuse you. So I definitely don't like to isolate my work, so I would recommend you turn that off. I'm obviously not going to use Japanese crop marks, especially when I'm teaching here in America. Um, to be honest, I don't even know the difference anyway, so I leave that turned off. Um, when I'm working with patterns, absolutely transform your pattern tiles. Absolutely scale your corners. See that little gray bar that popped up? That's a tool tip. That's where we turned them on right over here. And the most important is scale your strokes and effects. So if you have a thin outline on an object and then you blow up that object and you scale it up, your outline would also scale. That is really important especially when you're starting with a big object with thick outlines and you go to shrink it. You want your outlines to shrink with the trend, uh, transformation. Enable content aware defaults. I'm not sure what that does. So for now, I'm going to keep that turned off and I'm not going to honor the scale on importing PDFs. I'll leave these two off. But I do want these three, transform my patterns, scale my corners, and absolutely scale strokes and effects. When I click selection and anchor display, there are two 
options down here. It says enable rubber band. Okay, this was supposed to be a way to preview your curves before you even draw them. And it doesn't really work. It leaves lines all over your screen and they tend to get in the way when you draw. So I would recommend you turn off both of those. Another somewhat newer feature, it's been around for the last couple um, versions is changing the size of your anchor points if you want to see them. Um, this is just my default, so I'll just leave it there. Uh, let's see, I don't need any of these turned on. Um, those are going to be fine. Let's see, except this one. Move locked and hidden artwork with the artboard. That has always been a problem in the past, so I want to turn that on. Um, I have a demo, I believe, in Chapter 2 where I show you how the artboards work, so I'm going to turn that one on. Under type, there are a couple new features down at the bottom. You do not want to show character alternates. Those are little um, alternates to advanced type features. They start to show up on your screen even when you don't need them. And every time you click with the type tool, it's going to come up with Latin placeholder text. So I'm going to turn this off. Do not fill my type with placeholder text. As soon as I click, I'll see the type when I start typing, not when I see this Latin text. It just gets in the way. So I'm going to turn off those two features. Under units, you want your general measurements to be inches. So you can create an eight and a half inch by 11 inch sheet of paper. Strokes and points are always, or strokes and type are always measured as points. That's the standard measurement for outlines and typography. Under guides, the typical is a cyan guide, and that gets really hard to see on the screen. So I would recommend you switch your guides to red. They're more vibrant, they're more easily visible on a white sheet of paper. Um, we're not gonna use a grid at all, but even if you were to try them, I wouldn't put a light gray grid over your artwork. I would probably do it in like a blue, not the same red, because then you'll get them all mixed up, but a darker, heavier color to see things. Same thing with your smart guides. I don't want smart guides to come up as light, light, light blue or cyan. I want mine to come up as blue. Again, it's more easily visible on the screen. A new feature in Illustrator CC 2021 is glyph guides. And glyph guides, when they say the word glyph, they mean the letter, the font that you're using. So you can help to align things to your fonts easier now in Illustrator CC 2021 versus the past where you had to convert your type into a drawing and then use smart guides to line up with the points on the type which technically wasn't even type anymore, it was a drawing. It gets really crazy. But this is an advanced feature to help you line things up with active fonts in your file. And again, if you're going to take advantage of that, you don't want light colors. Um, I would even go black because we've used light blue, used dark blue for smart guides, we've used red for guides. So you want to try to designate different colors. Okay, when it comes to smart guides themselves, you have all of these features. You have like seven different features, okay? This will help me line things up. Object highlighting, I like to know if I'm on the edge of the path or on the anchor point, so I keep that. If I wanna line things up on the page, I can use alignment guides. I don't need transformation tools. I don't need big construction guides showing up with crisscrossing lines all over my screen. They just flash on and off and it tends to confuse people. Um, if I'm on an object highlighted, I don't need the anchor or path labels. I kind of know that I'm on there. Measurement labels, I don't use those and I don't use spacing guides. In fact, yeah, I'm gonna turn this one back on, anchor or path labels. I'm not sure the difference between object highlighting, which it would highlight on an anchor point, and then anchor path label. So I'll just keep these three. 
the top two on the left side, this one on the right side. By the time you get down to smart guides, you're pretty much done. You're not going to be using slicing. Slices are for web page designs. We're not going to be adding any more words into our Illustrator dictionary for hyphenated words. Plugins are additional features or filters you can buy from third-party software developers to add more functionality to Illustrator. We obviously don't have that. Our scratch disk, scratch disk is your startup disk, your hard drive. That's where Illustrator is getting the amount of RAM or memory to run the application. The user interface is a medium dark color. You could see right here, the interface will get brighter and brighter and this will screw up your eyes in the future. So we want to go with the default medium dark um, and just keep it there. Those are your defaults. If you're a little difficult with your vision and it's hard to see things, you can change the user interface scaling, the words, so you can see things a little more clearly. Performance, this is just tells you the um, information that's running the program, so that's fine. File handling, you want on quit or on copy the PDF information. I think that's the default anyway. Appearance of black, you want to keep this as default since you're doing digital work. If you are doing work for a printing press, I would say on screen, display blacks accurately. But since we're doing work digitally, we'll just display all our blacks as rich black. And under devices, keep that. I don't even have a Wacom tablet plugged in, but I'm going to keep that anyway. So that should walk through all of your features here under the preferences in Adobe Illustrator CC 2021. You click OK and you're ready to get started.